Here's my tea for today from Rainy Day Tea Company. Cozy Cloud Chai. Hi there. So it is Sunday evening, December the 12th, and I figured I'd check in with what I've been reading for this <laughs> reading vlog that hasn't very, had very much reading in it yet. So I've been working a lot on this book, The Mosquito, A Human History of Our Deadliest Predator by Timothy Weingard. Um, I've been working on this book for months. I started it in September and then put it down and I did pick it up again in November for nonfiction November, but I didn't finish it. And it's been my nightstand book. So when I wake up in the middle of the night, I pick it up and read it. And I haven't been sleeping well this weekend. So I've done quite a bit of reading in it. I am currently on page 345 and there's about 430 pages total in the book. So this is a history of basically human development and how the mosquito has impacted that development. So um, illness caused by mosquito-borne diseases such as malaria, yellow fever, and the like really have impacted how humans have settled around the globe and which nations have risen and fallen. Um, there's been a lot of impact due to the mosquito-borne illnesses. And so the, the whole point of this book is lots of things have happened over history that um, were greatly impacted or maybe even caused by mosquito-borne illnesses and we don't really think of them that way. So so that for example there's chapters on the Roman Empire and how the Roman Empire and its rise and fall was impacted by mosquitoes. Um, I just finished a chapter on the Civil War in America and how um, the blockades of southern ports and the um, restriction of goods flowing into the Confederate South really caused uh, a lot of damage to the southern cause because they couldn't get um, medicine to help them deal with malaria and yellow fever and the union army had um, had access to those medicines and so their troops while they would still get sick they got sick a lot less and so much more of the union troops were able to stay healthy and to fight as opposed to the confederate troops and so that is one thing that we don't really think about a lot when it comes to the um, Civil War in the United States and the impact that uh, mosquito-borne illnesses had on it. So this book is really interesting in terms of those sorts of historical insights, but I do find that the way that the book is written is quite repetitive in the way that the narrative is structured. Um, I think this could have been edited down tremendously because there's a lot of even almost sentence by sentence um, of the author repeating himself, like using the same phrases, using the same, just restating the same fact over and over again. Um, so I find that quite tedious actually to read. And I have begun to quite skim quite a bit to try to get through this book because there are, there is information here that I want to 
consume, but I, I just feel that it's uh, not presented in the, the best way that to make it um, to make it an enjoyable read. But so, you know, that happens sometimes with nonfiction. It doesn't mean that I don't think that the information is important. It's just that it isn't my favorite style of writing. Um, and then I also picked up Dead Wake today. This is The Last Crossing of the Lusitania by Eric Larson. Um, I am buddy reading this with Karen at Run Right Reads, Patrice Jones, and Doris. Actually, Patrice has already read this, so she's just sort of going to be talking with us about it because she's already previously read the book. But Doris and Karen and I, this will be our first time through it. Um, we all love Eric Larson's writing and we've been trying to work through his back catalog together. This is the story of the Lusitania, which was a cruise ship, um, a cruise liner, passenger cruise liner in the early 1900s um, from the company Cunard. And um, I mean, everybody pretty much knows what happens to the Lusitania, but this is like the full story. And I'm expecting it to be really, really uh, engaging because that's the way Eric Larson writes. I, like I said, I just started this book. Um, so I'm only on page 22. Uh, I've just finished the first chapter. Um, just like for the type of information that is already being discussed. So the Lusitania was powered by coal. It was a coal powered um, ship and it was the fastest passenger ship in the world at the time. Um, but while the ship was underway, it used so much coal that it had uh, 100 people working per shift, 300 people total working 100 men per shift to shovel the coal to keep the furnaces going, to keep the ship running. Um, and it had 192 furnaces on board with 25 boilers. Um, just amazing to think about the amount of work and effort it took to keep the ship operational because not only was it powered by like in terms of the motion through the water was done by steam engine but also the lighting in the ship um, if you think of modern day cruise ships and how much lighting is in those behemoths um, and think about all of that being run by coal um, it's really interesting descriptions in here of like how hard the employees of the ship had to work to keep like the coal dust off of all the surfaces um, because this was a luxury cruise liner. So the people that were in first class expected things to be really nice. Um, so that's really interesting uh, piece of information that I hadn't really thought about um, before. So yeah, already very, very much interested in what Eric Larson has to say about the Lusitania. So yeah, those are the two books that I've been working on the most in the past two days. Um, it's been quite busy this weekend. I haven't had a lot of time to read, unfortunately, um, but I knew that going into the weekend. Uh, so I think I will show you my bullet journal spread that I have going for um, Mid-Month Book Bash before I close this vlog out for the night. Okay, so this bullet journal spread for Mid-Month Book Bash is just you know, straight out stolen from Doris. And so I drew in some stars that I'm coloring in for each day that I complete doing a daily vlog. So I've done two daily vlogs and today working on the third, hope to have this posted before I go to bed tonight. And this is just my little chart of the books that I've been working on and how many pages that I've read. Um, in each of them, Ashley Cushill's Chosen is my fantasy book I'm reading right now, but that's my audio book. So that, you know, doesn't really count, but I did finish Payment in Blood yesterday. Um, that was the uh, Inspector Lindley mystery book that I read. So um, I haven't yet filled in uh, the pages that I've read in Deadweight because I hope to do read a little bit more before I go to bed tonight. But got 53 pages read in The Mosquito last night. Um, so yeah, uh, haven't filled in anything yet for today because, uh, you know, I haven't got much reading done. So hopefully I will get a little bit more done tonight before I go to bed. Anyway, uh, I will see you tomorrow.